Hello everyone, my name is Florence. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome to my channel if you are new. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my favorite books of 2021. If you do want to follow me on Instagram or TikTok, that's linked down below. I post on TikTok quite often. I sometimes even post on Instagram. So yeah, I forgot, always forget to say that, but you can also follow me there if you want. So today we are going to be talking about books. <laughs> I love reading and I set the reading challenge for 50 books this year. I've finished 48 and I do plan to finish 50. I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah, so I thought I would talk about some of my favorite reads of this year. And so if you're looking for book recommendations, then this is the video for you. If you look at this list, there are mental health books. There are also books about social issues that I read for school. And then there's gay books. So I feel like that very much sums me up as a person. So if you're looking for any of that, this is the video. <laughs> so um, the first book that I'm, I'm a low key obsessed with this book and I feel like I can talk about it again now that the Netflix film came out. So this is Passing by Nella Larson. I love this book. I've read it twice. Uh, I have reread it before my state exam in January and I absolutely love this book. It's an easy read. It's like 150 pages or something. And I feel like it, it raises such important questions. It's just like one of those books that stays with you like at least that's how it was for me and it made me rethink a lot of things like obviously I'm a white person so I can like I have no connection to the racial issues that this book talks about but I feel like it really opened my eyes and it was also like an exciting read and there are like twists and it's kind of a, li a little bit like drama and it was a great book so basically quick recap of the story. Claire and Irene are childhood best friends and they don't see each other for like 20 years and they randomly run into each other one day and they kind of rekindle their friendship a bit but their lives have gone in completely different directions. They're both mixed race and they're both white passing. So Claire marries a white man who doesn't know that she's black and Irene marries a black man and they're completely living different lives. And it's basically just about like the struggles of both and basically both are unhappy in their life and both have something that there's lacking. Um, Claire completely gave up her community and her life and she feels a lot of regret for that and that's why she tries to rekindle French with Irene. The movie was good I think but the book is so so much better so if you like the movie you're gonna love the book. But I also I would also recommend the movie if you if you want are more into that but I think it was good um a really interesting thing is that they shot the movie in black and white which I felt like was a great choice shooting it in black and white made the color of the character's skin not so obvious so Claire and Irene both had the same skin color basically as the white characters it was just very interesting um would recommend the book recommend the movie recommend the book a lot more so the next um, book is a series. I have a couple series on here, but it's the Simon Snow series by Rainbow Rowell. The third book came out this year and I did a reread of the first two books before jumping into the third one. I love this series. It's so, so sweet and cute. And I think it also like helped me in like my gender journey because like Baz gave me a lot of gender in me. <laughs> if you don't know about the series, the first book is called Carry On. You might be more familiar with that. The second book is called Wayward and the third book is called Anyway the Wind Blows. Uh, it's by Rainbow Rowell. It's set in this magic school and it's kind of like Harry Potter. The main romantic storyline is an enemies to lovers storyline and there's also like other issues going on that they have to solve. There's like mystery, there's twists and turns. The book is very, very funny and also the friendships are really, really sweet and endearing and the, the side characters and their love interests are also really fun to read and you're really rooting for them. This is just like a very very sweet book and I love it so much. Would recommend. The third one is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. I read this in January. I did not actually read it for my state exam. I've just been mentioning this a lot, but I actually um, study literature, English literature, and I did my BA in American studies. So that's why <laughs> I have some like some of these classics on here, but I read The Bell Jar after my state exam. I was just very, very interested. I'd, I'd heard of that it's like about like a mental health hospitalization and a girl's struggle with depression. This is a hard book, so like don't read it if you're in a bad mood, but like Plath is amazing. I loved her poems, I love her novel. I feel like it really captures what depression is like and the character is also a high functioning depressed person, which I feel like is not talked about enough that you can like be seemingly well and still be depressed. It's inspired by Sylvia Plath's own life and it's a difficult read, but I feel like it really portrays 
mental illness and depression well. The next one on my list is the Lunar Chronicles series by Marissa Meyer. There are five books, I think. I love this book series. I first read this when I was six years ago, like before the final book came out. So it was like, it was like 18, 17, 18. I don't know. My best friend recommended it to me and I really, really enjoyed it. It's like a fantasy sci-fi retelling of classic fairy tales. It has the lost princess. It has the evil, evil queen who they have to defeat. It's just very, very exciting, very, very funny. The characters are so sweet and lovable. And it's like, like a sci-fi fantasy retelling of Cinderella, Rapunzel, Little Red Riding Hood, Snow White. And the whole thing is woven into a series and the heroes fight against the, the evil queen who, who lives on the moon. And it's about like Earth's war with the moon. And like, there's a political side to it. And there's a raging pandemic at the same time, which I do have to say like the letimosis um, epidemic or pandemic that takes place in the book. Like when I first read it, I had no idea about what like a pandemic is actually like, but when I reread it this time, I was like, that's not very accurate. <laughs> it's so funny like reading this with like, after like actually experiencing this because I had moments where I was like, why don't they isolate? Like, why aren't they wearing masks? It was interesting reading this after like having actually lived it. But like, other than that, it's, it's just a very good series. The world is very well built. I adore this. And if you like love fantasy, love classical fairy tales, you're going to love this book and it has a happy ending and all that. And the character is also like very funny and lovable and would recommend read this. <laughs> very good. The next book that I'm going to be talking about is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This was another reread. I've read this before. I loved it the first time, loved it the second time. It's just a very sweet book and it's like the world you want to live in. If you're not familiar with it, it's the story of the first son and the Prince of England falling in love. If you're just like in the mood for like a sweet gay romance, then this is the book for you. Um, it's very well written, also very funny. The characters are very well developed. I love this book. The next one is All the Young Dudes series by Miss King Bean 89 and this is the only fan fiction on this list. It's a fan fiction but it's like novel level. It's amazing. If I count the whole series in like one book it was 1571 pages on my e-reader and I do have to say that because that's pretty impressive that I read this. It's divided into three books and it's about the Marauders. So it's a Harry Potter fan fiction of young James, Sirius, Remus and Peter and Lily and everyone from that generation and it starts when they're like 11 and it ends with the events of the Order of Phoenix. I did a whole review on it if you want to watch it it's up, linked up here and down below. I do have separate reviews on some of these I'll link them down below. I adored that like this book like I was sucked into this series. I was sucked into it so much. The slow burn, the the, rom the romance is between Remus and Sirius and Remus is the first person narrator. A focalizer? I don't know if it was written from first person or third person, I can't remember. I think it was from third person so then he was the focalizer. It was very good. This book really helped me when I was like first arriving in Brussels and I was just like bored and lonely and uh, like feeling <laughs> a lot of things and like this book was a great escape for me. I fell in love with the whole fandom. It made me feel a lot of emotions. It made me laugh so much. I could hardly put this down. So even if you're like really not that into the Marauders, I feel like if you read this book after that, you will be. So <laughs> very much recommend this as well. The next one is um very different from all the young dudes. There's a big range here, but the next one I'm going to recommend is 4.48 Psychosis by Sarah Kane. And this is the only book that's actually not a novel, not even a book, it's a play. I read this play for school and oh, wow, this play is amazing. Like, I just want to take some quotes from it and just be like this. This is how it feels like. This is also about mental health. It's also about depression and suicidal thoughts. It was performed either as a monologue or with three actors. I feel like it captured it so well. And that's because Sarah Kane was writing from personal experience as well. I feel like people often mistake this play for a suicide note because she did end her life shortly after writing this, but it's it's so much more than a suicide note. I, I don't even think it's fair to say it like that because it's, it's a work of art. Like, this, like every, anyone who doesn't understand depression, like this, this, this just shows exactly what it feels like. And some of those senses I was like, oh my God, yes. Like 
I don't want to use the word relatable because that's kind of weird, but like that's how it felt like for me. I felt heard, I felt seen, amazing. Um, it's also pretty short, so, but also don't read this if you're in a bad mood, but amazing. Um, amazing. The next one that I'm going to recommend is actually the book I'm working on for my thesis and it's Borderline by Michelle Baker. I gave him my thesis topic for um, borderline characters in literature and that's what I'm working on. I originally planned to work on a different book but then I came across this one and this is the first book I've read where the character's mental illness is not the main storyline which is amazing and we need more of that. Millie is disabled, she's mentally ill and it's just something that happens to be part of her. It's like a fantasy book with like fae and multiple worlds and solving mysteries and it's exciting and the character just happens to have mental illness and the other characters also have mental illness and I love that it's just portrayed in like they're living their everyday life sometimes it makes it harder but they're still like taking part in these adventures and like I love seeing mentally ill characters in fantasy books more, and we really really need more of that and the representation I feel like is very very good Millie is extremely self-aware and she knows her mechanisms and I feel like it's it's handled really well and just sh shown as a thing that she struggles with and it's not the main storyline and it's basically about her finding her way back to life after her suicide attempt which is amazing. She's also disabled. I can't really speak on that but I feel like it's also handled well. Um, if you read this book and definitely tell me what you think but I, I felt like it was just it was just shown as something that she has to live with. There's this scene at the end where she was the first time where she imagines herself not with her old body before she became disabled but with her with her new body scars and all and amputee and all and that was just like a very nice moment i really really recommend this book it's also part of a series called the arcadia project and i'm reading the second book right now and i just love it i also want to mention that there's another character who also has mental illness who's called carol she's a warlock and she basically separates her emotions and turns it into like this it's called a familiar in the book it's like it's basically she creates this little dragon that is full of magic and that contains her emotions for her and I feel like that's also really really interesting and we we see completely different sides of her when she has the dragon out containing her emotions where she she's just in her practical mind and then when that that construct breaks for some reason because she's overwhelmed or something then we see a completely we see what her emotions are actually like and Millie keeps telling Carol that the only person who's afraid of her emotions is you and, and that she should not like separate her, her emotions from herself completely. It's very interesting. Please read this. It's very good. <laughs> yeah, that is all the books that I'm going to recommend today. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to, you can subscribe down below, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and I'll see you next week for a brand new video. Doodles!